Ben, and welcome to my book corner. Today we're taking a look at some spin-off media from Critical Role. Anyone who doesn't know what Critical Role is, is basically a group of self-proclaimed nerdy ass voice actors who sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. In fact, a lot of D&D's current popularity is attributed to this very popular group of voice actors and the games that they've been playing for multiple years at this point. As of time of recording, Critical Role is on its third main campaign. There are spin-off campaigns as well, however, that have occurred. And the first campaign is currently undergoing the transition into animated form, with Season 2 of Vox Machina set to release on Amazon Prime this week. The book we're looking at today, however, follows my favourite character so far within the Critical Role universe in terms of main characters, and that is... The Mighty Nine Origins of Caleb Widogast. As with my previous graphic novel review, I shall, as normal, look at the story, the characters, the world building. I shall also look at the presentation overall within the graphic novel and give my thoughts at the end. So let's just jump in. So there's two things I need to mention very quickly right off the bat. The first thing is that this is quite a short graphic novel coming in at less than 60 pages. Therefore, it does have a lot of ground to cover. The other thing is this is very much a summarised history of Caleb Widogast before he was discovered by the group that became the Mighty Nine. So there is a great deal of individual detail that will be missing here there's a lot of filling the gaps but this is capturing the broad strokes that informed his character at the time we first meet him so the story follows caleb or as his real name is bren as he joins the sorceress academy sorceress academy is the leading magical institution in the dundalian empire while he is there he makes a number of friends astrid and aidwolf being the two closest and the three of them together catch the eye of Trent Ickathon. Trent is a member of the council, Magical Council of Advisors in many ways to the King, or the Cerberus Assembly. Three of them are handpicked to be very much almost inquisitors in some regards for the Empire. The story then follows the various sacrifices each of them make individually, and it comes to a point where there is a test for each of them that is very much a tragic point in Caleb's life and something that he regrets going forward. I'm trying not to spoil too much of it here, especially if you're planning on watching Critical Role. I don't want to, to ruin anything from there for you. But basically, after this personal test, it is decided that it was too much for him and that he's snapped and he's too dangerous to be left free. And he is incarcerated within a sanitarium. Eventually he escapes this sanitarium and he goes travelling around the world using various different names and monikers just to keep him away from being found by Trent. Eventually, at the end of the book, he meets up with a little goblin girl who we all know as Not the Brave and that fetches us pretty close to the start of Campaign 2 of Critical Role. So, as I said, there is... A lot that isn't in here just because it is a short graphic novel but this gets the basic strokes in very very clearly of why Bren or Caleb is as he is and from that regard it tells a surprisingly cohesive story in such a handful of pages. So in terms of world building it is quite limited due to the tight focus and the various time jumps that you experience throughout this but it does a good job of showing the sacrifices that are expected of servants of the empire in the upper echelons and also shows how ruthless the Cerberus assembly is in its approach to maintaining order and gaining power for want of a better term. The other thing it does do is it shows the simple life that a lot of the normal folk of the empire deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. It does touch on things like celebrations and also how people who are seen as dangerous 
or unstable are dealt with. So there is some good world building in here. Again, it's a short graphic novel, but what is here is solid. On to characters, and obviously the focus here is on Caleb. And if you've seen Critical Role, everything in here makes complete sense. And it's actually quite a tragic backstory for the character with everything that he has to go through. And it does a really good job of establishing a bit of sympathy and understanding and some of his soft quirks that you see him portrayed with within the show. Other characters don't fare quite so well, as you'd expect with the short page time in this book. A lot of them are quite one note, but the note that they hit is very, very relevant for what you see within the show. Trent in particular is shown as very scheming, conniving, and almost power hungry in many regards. Whereas Aid Wolf and Astrid are shown as caring friends, but ambitious almost to a fault. And again, this is stuff that does come up within campaign two. So this is good stuff here. So on to visual presentation and it's pretty good. There's a few sort of kinks here and there in terms of how faces are animated, which isn't to my personal taste. Occasionally, things just look slightly out of proportion. The really interesting thing is how muted the colour scheme is overall. I hadn't picked up on it the first time round, but there's a lot of very, very brownish earthen tones all the way through this, almost like a drab mundanity, just to show how normal and uninspiring life is, or how in many ways depressing life is at the Academy with so much reliance on what they've got to do. Yeah, it's, it's well drawn, well done, like I said, faces can be a bit of a miss at time for me personally, but it's pretty decent overall. So there's two key things with this book, and it's kind of a duology in the way that I see this, in that I love this graphic novel because I love the character of Caleb after watching him through hundreds of hours in the main campaign for campaign two he's a character that I felt an affinity for and I enjoyed and this graphic novel kind of puts the icing on the cake just to fill in a few of the little blanks and a little bit more information on the character and if you're a fan of the mighty nine or Caleb or indeed critical role in general then this I think is a must buy. That being said however this does follow a relatively large amount of time in very few pages so if this is just a casual read you're after then I'm not sure this would be for you. This is very much how to write a bio for a character for a TTRPG and in that regard it's amazing to show what you can do when building a character. But as a standalone for somebody who isn't a fan of Critical Role or has never done Critical Role before, unless you're planning on getting into Critical Role, this is probably something you probably wouldn't really read. And even if you're planning on getting into it, I would probably watch some Critical Role first and then come back to this and the other origin stories, just once you've got a bit of a sense of the characters anyway. So for me, overall, this is a three star. Have you read this? Have you read the other origin stories? What are your opinions of them? You let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, a like is always appreciated but never needed. I'll catch you all next time.